Hi, it's Ann Moyer, and I wanted to talk a minute about what I teach and why I think it's something special. I teach an operatic method called bel canto, and I teach it to beginning and experienced singers, and I show them how it applies to just about any variety of singing. Bel canto is an operatic method that was developed in the 1400s um, when it became out of fashion to make new castrati. They still needed males to sing high, and they experimented and they worked out how this would happen, and this is the method that they developed. <clears throat> By the 1600s, uh, pieces were being written for this method, and it flourished for a while and kind of fell out of favor in the late 1800s, 1900s thereabouts. Um, it, was, it had its place with an opera, but one of the problems is, is that most traditional opera requires you to use other techniques to do it. Some are exactly opposite of what bel canto does. Um, and so that means anybody who's learning opera now, like people who are in, in university for it, are learning something probably different. They're probably not learning this method at all. They're, they're learning the register-based stuff we'll get to in a minute. But it's, it's kind of a form of historical recreation. Um, they're trying to do an old song using the old method of the day. And you wouldn't use bel canto to sing Wagner, at least not in an opera company, maybe in a recital or something. But it just, you know, it can, it can do anything. You could sing anything with it, but in a traditional sense, you wouldn't. And the majority of teachers out there are what I would call register-based teachers. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And what that means is that they <clears throat> handle chest voice, head voice, falsetto, mix, head dominant mix, chest dominant mix, all as individual things to practice and as individual registers that must be handled in discrete and different ways. And this again ties into old opera stuff too, where that is also a requirement. Bel Canto kind of ignores all that. And because of the mechanics of how it works, it allows a practitioner to use their entire range using the same set of movements and to not really modify them too much from one extent of their range to the other. Um, with a microphone, I can sing down to a D2. Without a microphone, an A2. And uh, on A, I can get up to an A5 at the other end. And I'm not some magical unicorn. That's how the method works. I have students that live in octave two, and I can get them to phonate up an octave five. It's just how the method works. Um, <clears throat> so, again, to some people it sounds like nonsense. It can't possibly work. What's going on? Well, what it is, is it's physics and it's vowel manipulation. So we find a peak point of resonance in your skull. And we teach a student how to make a vowel resolve there. Like if you make kind of a semi-whiny A sound, ah, it's going to give you a vibration sensation somewhere up around behind your eyes. And if you do the same thing with an E or an O, it's going to feel in a slightly different position. That's normal. So everybody's spot of where that hits is a little different because it's based upon the shape and size of your skull. But what we do is we teach a student how to make all of their vowels resolve there, that vibration sensation, regardless of the pitch or regardless of the vowel. And so we're manipulating how we make the vowel in order to make that perceived resonance stay in that optimal position. And in doing that, it basically turns your skull into a megaphone. Um, it's, you're not moving a lot of air. It's actually very quiet sounds. And it is, uh, you can make very loud sounds with it. Uh, personally, I've measured myself at 122 decibels, but I can also use the full method down at 80 decibels. Uh, and the difference in how you get there is how you're controlling the air using your abdominal system. It's, this is 
This is like learning to dance. This is like learning how to do Tai Chi. You're learning a very specific set of movements to manipulate things in your sinuses, your scalp muscles. We're trying to keep the larynx relaxed, the, the jaw relaxed. We're doing a lot of work in our abdomen. We're doing a lot of work up here muscularly, but we're not doing a whole lot here. And the side effect, the result of that, is that you can sing for hours and hours and hours every night of the week. And so this is used by people who are doing professional touring shows uh, because it's totally strain free. And again, anybody can learn this. This is such a simple thing to do. You knew how to do everything you need to do when you were an infant. You unlearned it when you learned language. So again, this is something that I, I really delight in, in showing people how this all works. It's the truck frame of singing too, because once you learn the basics of it, you can add distortion and fry and, or airiness or other things to it and go from, you know, I can sound like, Billy Joel or Rob Zombie or Angela Lansbury. It's how you color and how you tone the voice after that. And it's entirely in your control. So anyhow, thank you for joining me. I hope to see you in a lesson. So as always, I give a free consult to anybody who asks. I have a program of uh, low cost lessons for those who are really in dire need. So if you are in such dire need and are hesitating because you just can't afford it, message me. Anyhow, peace. I'll see you all online.